Good evening. My name is Alex Tuckman, and I'm the Artistic Director of the Bermuda Piano Festival. Tonight, it's my pleasure to introduce pianist and composer Jeremy Ajani Jordan, who is presenting Music of the World from Minimalism to Duke Ellington. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Bermuda Festival of the Performing Arts for its partnership, especially Executive Director Cindy Campbell and Project and Marketing Manager Maria Citrin. I'd also like to express our thanks and appreciation to ELIS Capital Management, our principal benefactor since 2017, and to Clavier House in New York City, especially Sujatri Reisinger, for donating their facilities and instruments and enabling us to be with you virtually this year. Finally, the Bermuda Piano Festival relies upon the generosity of businesses and individuals for funding. For information on how you can support the festival, as well as details on next week's concert, please visit bermudapianofestival.com. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy Ajani Jordan and it is my sincere pleasure to be a part of the Bermuda Piano Festival. I just wanted to take a few minutes to explain a little bit about some of the music that I'll be performing on my concert. Uh, the opening number of, of the program is a beautiful hymn uh, called Oh How He Loves You and Me. Uh, now it's something that is a bit of uh, sacred music, something that you would expect to hear in a worship setting or something like that. Uh, but I've combined it uh, with some language and idioms from some of my favorite piano players, people like Oscar Peterson and Phineas Newborn and Art Tatum, and I added a little bit of my own language as well. And I tried to combine uh, those sort of improvised languages with the original sort of mood of the song. Uh, so I hope that I was able to preserve uh, the sort of sacredness of that song while also bringing something a little bit new to it, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Uh, now, I'll also be performing uh, two original jazz compositions, one by Mr. Charles Mingus, which is called Peggy's Blue Skylight, uh, and another by Duke Ellington, which is called uh, The Single Petal of a Rose. Now, when I say original jazz compositions, I mean that in a way to differentiate them from uh, things like jazz standards. Now, jazz standards are songs uh, that have lyrics, uh, things that were usually borrowed uh, from the Great American Songbook uh, so that jazz musicians could improvise over them and have a, a vehicle or medium through which they could express their ideas. Uh, so that would be music uh, like songs by Cole Porter, for instance, or George Gershwin uh, or Jerome Kern. Uh, those sorts of things uh, were songs that were usually part of musicals or, or some other setting, and jazz musicians borrowed them and began to improvise over them. But these two songs that I'm performing are original jazz compositions, uh, things that were written by jazz musicians for jazz musicians. And there's a subtle difference there that I think you can hear that they were really composed with the intent of having that language uh, spoken over them. Uh, so I hope you enjoy those two pieces. Now in the center of the program, there is a classical work, um, a transcription of my own uh, of Parsifal, Parsifal, uh, which is a very beautiful opera by Richard Wagner. Uh, now, I transcribed three scenes from this opera. I transcribed the, the overture or the introduction, and I transcribed the penultimate scene and then also the final scene. Uh, and these transcriptions are pretty faithful to the original score. I, I didn't uh, add any you know, alterations, and there's no originally composed material in the transcription. It's really quite literal. Um, I did a few things to make it a little bit more pianistic uh, so that it could be expressed on the piano a little bit more easily and naturally. Uh, but in terms of the musical material, it's all Richard Wagner, so I really hope you enjoy that transcription. And the reason that I, I put it on the program is because it's actually very closely conceptually related 
to the last uh, two works on the program that I'll talk about, um, one of which is a composition of my own called For Flint, uh, and another of which is a, a beautiful composition of Indian classical music by my dear friend Pawan Benjamin, and that piece is called Clarity. Uh, now, both of these pieces uh, have elements of minimalism in them. They involve uh, a lot of drones, uh, harmonic stagnation, and long periods where there's uh, sort of just one or two very simple things going on. And believe it or not, that's something that I really got into from studying Parsifal. Uh, Wagner's opera Parsifal is the last opera that he composed. Um, and it has a lot of these elements of um, mathematical sequencing uh, combined with minimalism, uh, so just not really doing very much. And there's a kind of profound beauty in that sort of simplicity, and I begin to explore it more deeply in my own uh, composition for Flint, which I was writing, you know, right around the time uh, that I was also transcribing Parsifal. Uh, now, the composition for Flint and also the, uh, the piece Clarity by Pawan uh, you'll see uh, in the concert that there is some technology involved as well. Um, you'll see a, a small interface that I sometimes interact with during the concert, and you'll also notice that there will be a computer set up uh, to my left. And essentially what's happening there is that in real time, there's a small pickup microphone inside of the piano, uh, which is taking the, the audio or the sound from my piano and sending it into my computer where all sorts of technological uh, effects are applied. There's a, a delay and also a, a flanger and some other things which alter and distort the sound in a really beautiful way. Uh, and then I control the intensity of that experience uh, by uh, manipulating that on the audio interface. So you, you might see me doing that as I'm playing. Uh, and you know these, uh, these two modern compositions, they have a, a lot of elements of minimalism in them. Um, but it's also very cool to see this kind of modern prepared piano or the, the use of the piano combined with technology uh, to create a new sound world. Uh, so I sincerely hope that you enjoy those as well. So that's the, that's the entire program. Uh, I really hope you enjoy listening to it. It's been a pleasure to, uh, to perform this music and put it together. And my sincere thanks uh, to Alex Tuckman and also uh, the Bermuda Piano Festival. Hope you enjoy it. All best.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. If you just tuned in, or if you've been tuning in for the past hour or so, you just watched Jeremy Johnny Jordan show, Music of the World from Minimalism to Duke Ellington. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Jeremy for your time and for such a beautiful concert. Thank you so much for, for your kind words. It was, uh, it was really a joy to participate in it. I had a blast. Yeah, and it was such a, a moving performance. So if you don't mind, I'd love to ask you a few questions. Absolutely. So my first question for you, it centers around performance in a virtual space. And I'm sure you've gotten these questions so many times over the past year. But to play indirectly for an audience poses a new challenge of being able to convey the power of a piece. Um, and you definitely still achieve that over the course of this hour. So kudos to you. Right. Um, my question for you is how has it been for you over the past year entering these virtual spaces um, to be able to play for a virtual audience? I feel like it's a different kind of intimacy as a performer. Yeah, you know, you're right. Uh, surprisingly, I'm actually kind of into it. I know that that's like not, not the response I'm supposed to give, but I actually kind of like it. It's nice in a way. I think, um, you know, for me, what ended up happening, because I've done a lot of virtual performances uh, in addition to this to this festival. And what's been kind of nice about it is that it helped me to realize that what I was enjoying about it wasn't really the the hall or the room or the, the presence of an audience. Uh, what I what I really enjoyed about it was just like knowing that someone out there's day is a little better because they heard it. You know, that's really all it comes down to, you know, and so whether that was happening, you know, in a small salon with like 15 or 20 people or in a huge hall with like, you know, three or 4,000 attendants, uh, or if it was just, you know, through a camera lens, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the, the purpose of music is really kind of therapeutic in a way, you know, I'm, I'm, I work and I practice, uh, to gain mastery over a craft to help people feel better, you know? And so, um, you know, from what I've heard of, from many of the virtual concerts that I've done is, you know, people were really thankful, you know, they enjoyed it and they were just saying, you know, how happy they were to be able to hear music at all. And in addition to that, I, you know, I'm kind of able to connect with a lot of people that I would not have been able to connect with in person. Uh, you know, so I've had people tune into live streams and they're in Canada, Europe, California, Florida, all at the same time, you know, and you can't possibly do that in a room or in a physical space. So, you know, of course, something was lost, you know, when you're not able to play in person, but something was gained as well, you know, and mm -hmm. I kind of, I kind of choose to focus on that. And instead of saying like, man, you know, I can't, you know, do things the way that I used to be able to do. I'm actually kind of happy that number one, I'm still able to do anything at all. And then number two is that, well, now I'm able to do those things for people that I wouldn't have been able to reach in person. And it's, you know, it's still, you know, helping them and encouraging them. And that's great. So that makes me happy. I'm into it. Yeah. No, that's really wonderful. And I think you saying that it, it ties into the theme of your performance, which is music of the world. So it's not just yeah. in your repertoire in itself, but it's also your ability, like you said, to touch people yeah. from around the world, which I think is an extremely powerful thing. And I guess yeah. that, that segues into my next question, which is in, in all of the corners that, that your music touched, whether that be culturally, geographically, um, there were such, still such universal themes in everything that you were playing. And I, from a listener's perspective, and also as a music lover myself, I was so intrigued by your repertoire because it seemed so disparate. And then when I heard you playing, there was such universality to, to the themes that you tapped into in your music. Um, and as a, a jazz musician, you're so much more than that, but you tapped into the, the wonderful world of jazz. Um, I was wondering what does jazz afford to you specifically to allow you to infiltrate those musical spaces um, to unlock those common denominators musically? Yeah, that, that's a wonderful question. And I'm actually really glad to, to hear you say that that came across in the concert because that was kind of you know, the whole driving force behind it. So, you know, first of all, a huge uh, thanks to Alex Tuckman, the director of the festival, for letting me program something like that. Um, he actually came to me and asked if I would be willing to do something 
uh, that was sort of all encompassing. And that's really great because a lot of music festivals are sort of narrow in their focus. You know, they, they focus only on what the festival is about. So it was kind of refreshing that he, you know, was so open to me trying something like this. And, you know, the thing about jazz sort of opening the, uh, the door, the doorways into those different areas, you know, I, I feel that what is so special about jazz is that it requires a really, really high degree of craftsmanship to do well. Um, because first of all, you have to have mastery of the instrument that you're playing, whether it be the piano or the saxophone or the drums or the trumpet, which is in itself a task. Then you have to have mastery and understanding of a language, right? And you have to be able to have such an understanding of that language that you can improvise in that language, right? So for example, if I'm playing music of Bach or Mozart or Haydn, you know, or Beethoven or something like that, it's incredibly beautiful and you definitely have to have mastery of the instrument to play it, but the language is written by them. You know, they write the music for you and then it's your job to execute and communicate that. But when you're improvising, you have to do that. Like you have to be playing the instrument and writing the music for the instrument at the same time, right? So it's, uh, it's incredibly, um, it, there's a very high degree of difficulty uh, in doing that well, you know? And so I think that once a musician is able to do that, and then there's a third thing, really. The third thing is that you have to be able to communicate that in a meaningful way to people that don't know anything about it, right? So you've got all three of those things going. You have to have your instrument mastered. You have to have this language mastered to the point that you're fluent enough to improvise in it. And then you have to have something meaningful to say to someone that doesn't know anything about music, right? So that's really tough. And I feel that if you can do those things well, pretty much any avenue of music is open to you, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you, if you want to play Indian classical music, right? Or, you know, if you want to play you know, Western classical music, or if you want to play jazz, or if you want to play fusion, or if you want to play gospel, if you, you know, those, the keys that open those doors are those three things, you know, mastery of your instrument, mastery of the language or fluency in the language, really. And then being able to have something to say with that language. If you can do those three things, you can play whatever you want. And so I was trying, I think, to illustrate that in this concert, you know, that if you, uh, and, and I'm not saying I've done it, I'm working on it myself, you know, mm -hmm. but in the process of doing that, I'm, I'm able to touch on all these other things, you know, so there's Wagner on the program and then there's also Duke Ellington and, you know, it works. Yeah, no, I, I think you did a really great job of doing that. I, Thank you. It reminds me of an article that I read about language and that the more language that you have access to, language acts as a light to things that we, we want to see but sometimes can't explain. And so wow. the more vocabulary that you have, the more you're able to tap into explaining those things that you didn't have the vocabulary for before. So I think what you said is such a, a powerful and poignant message, especially to budding musicians, in that in order to have the vocabulary to communicate an emotion, you have to you have to practice and you have to keep working on your craft and work on that instrument to build that relationship to be able to communicate what you want to. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, um, my pleasure. And to all budding musicians tuning in, I hope I hope you wrote that down because I, yeah. I, I'm taking that to heart. Jeremy, I want to ask you one final question, which is um, what can we look out for next from you? Are there any upcoming events to mark on our calendars or any new projects that you're working on that we can look forward to? Yeah, uh, I would say the, the best thing to do is to visit my website uh, or check out uh, my social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and it's all just Jeremy Ajani Jordan. So you can go to www.jeremyajanijordan.com uh, or you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at the same handle. And basically, I do my best to keep all of my, uh, my concerts there, things that are coming up. Uh, all of my albums that I've released are there to stream and listen to uh, on the website, that is. Um, so you can listen to those. And then any announcements about upcoming projects are all going to be there. I think probably uh, the next big thing that's coming up is a, uh, I'm probably going to be playing some music with the Metropolis Ensemble, which is a, a wonderful group of, of, uh, of musicians here in New York City. 
and we're going to do some music that I wrote, uh, which is which is going to be a lot of fun. So the only question, the thing that's a little bit up in the air is if it's going to be in person or if it's going to be, you know, streamed and, and virtual. But if it is virtual, like I said, that's kind of the nice thing that, you know, everybody around the world can tune in, which is pretty cool. Um, and if if I can have my my way with it, I think we might be able to do both. So we'll do it live and we'll stream it. And uh, so if that's the case, it'll be on my website. You can check it out and, uh, and watch it there. And that'll be great. Wonderful. And thank you for sharing that information. That would be yeah. cool to have the best of both worlds to reach even yeah. more people. But I think that's yeah, going to be the case. Good. Yeah. Well, those are all the questions I have for you for now. But again, Jeremy, I'd love I like to thank you for your time and thank you again for such a moving performance. Okay. Um, and again, to our audience for tuning in to, to tonight's performance and the past Bermuda Piano Festival performances. If you, if you would like to support the Bermuda Piano Festival and the Bermuda Festival, please visit the link below in the description and please tune in next Saturday, August 28th at 8 p.m. for the closing concert of the Bermuda Piano Festival, which will feature a program of works for two pianos. It's not just one, two. But again, thank you so much, Jeremy, for your time and all the best with all the upcoming things you have in the future. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. And hopefully I can see you guys in person next year. Yes, fingers crossed. Definitely. Take care. Bye-bye.